Study Skills Part T2 This is the continuation of Part 1 of Study Skills. Preview The student looks at the topic to be learned by glancing over the major headings or the points in the syllabus. Question The student formulates questions to be answered following a thorough examination of the topics. Read The student reads through the related material, focusing on the information that best relates to the questions formulated earlier. Summary, the student summarizes the topic, bringing his or her own understanding of the process. This may include written notes, spider diagrams, flow diagrams, label diagrams, mnemonics, or even voice recordings. Test, the student answers the questions drafted earlier, avoiding adding any questions that might distract or change the subject. A cue can be a word, short phrase, or song that helps the learner access a memory that was encoded intentionally with this prompt in mind. The use of cues to aid memory has been popular for many years, however, research suggests that adopting cues made by others is not as effective as cues that learners create themselves. Self-testing is another effective practice, when preparing for exams or other standardized memory recall situations. Many students prepare for exams by simply rereading textbook passages or materials. However, it's likely that this can create a false sense of understanding because of the increased familiarity that students have with passages that they have reviewed recently or frequently. The term testing effect is used to describe this increase in memory performance. Taking notes by using a computer can also deter impactful learning, even when students are using computers solely for the purpose note-taking and are not attempting to multitask during lectures or study sessions. Flashcards Flashcards are visual cues on cards. These have numerous uses in teaching and learning but can be used for revision. Students often make their own flashcards, or more detailed index cards, cards designed for filing, often A5 size, on which short summaries are written. Being discrete and separate, they have the advantage of allowing students to reorder them, pick a selection to read over, or choose randomly for self-testing. Software equivalents can be used. Summary methods Summary methods vary depending on the topic, but most involve condensing the large amount of information from a course or a book into shorter notes. Often, these notes are then condensed further into key facts. Organized summaries, such as outlines showing keywords and definitions and relations, usually in a tree structure. Spider diagrams, using spider diagrams or mind maps can be an effective way of linking concepts together. They can be useful for planning essays and essay responses in exams. These tools can give a visual summary of a topic that preserves its logical structure, with lines used to show how different parts link together. Visual imagery Some learners are thought to have a visual learning style, and will benefit greatly from taking information from their studies which are often heavily verbal, and using visual techniques to help encode and retain it in memory. Some memory techniques make use of visual memory, one popular memory-enhancing technique is the method of loci, a system of visualizing key information in real physical locations. For example, around a room. Diagrams are often underrated tools. They can be used to bring all the information together and provide practice reorganizing what has been learned in order to produce something practical and useful. Acronyms and Mnemonics A mnemonic is a method of organizing and memorizing information. There are four main types of mnemonic. 1. Narrative for example relying on a story of some kind, or a sequence of real or imagined events. 2. Sonic or textual for example using rhythm or repeated sound, such as rhyme, or memorable textual patterns such as acronyms. 3. Visual for example diagrams, mind maps, graphs, images, etc. 4. Topical meaning place dependent, for instance, using features of a familiar room, building or set of landmarks as a way of coding and recalling sequenced facts. Examination strategies. The black-red-green method developed through the Royal Literary Fund helps the student to ensure that every aspect of the question posed has been considered, both in exams and essays. The student underlines relevant parts of the question using three separate colors or some equivalent. BL Act denotes BL add an instructions, that is something that clearly must be done, a directive or obvious instruction. Red is a reference point or required input of some kind, usually to do with definitions, terms, cited authors, theory, etc. Either explicitly referred to or strongly implied. 
GR AIM denotes GR lens, which are subtle signals one might easily miss, or a green light that gives a hint on how to proceed, or where to place the emphasis in answers. This will continue with the part 3 of this video. If you really liked it and think it useful, please, share with those who are in need. Thank you for watching.